son we've never given him the talk about not looking into the window during the show <laughs> and so there he is it's thanksgiving so no one's here just us just us and there he is looking into the window in the box that rocks hey, did you bring a pie by the way i didn't bring a pie over i didn't we should not... celebrate our first show in the box that rocks by having a pie chap why didn't you bring a pie eric chap producer, our show producer some producers did not... are just so you just... know some producers all they do is focus on producing yeah I but we're asking you to be a pie specialist and you're refusing to do it this just in. So now Thrive Nation, we are talking about the high art of increasing your sales with the vice president of team professional services. And it's Miss Hillary Jenny. Miss Hillary Jenny, how are you? I'm doing great. Now, today we're talking about again this the sales system. We're talking about move number four, which is once you've developed a quality system, you must recruit A players to execute your system. Now, step number five, you must identify your biggest limiting factors and eliminate them one by one. One. Now, to kind of help you here, Thrivers, on my table of awesome here on Facebook Live, you'll see a copy of the Start Here book, which really is the world's best business book because it's a concoction. It's a, it's a, a cornucopia of, of, of evidence-based case studies, notable quotables, mystic statistics. It's a linear path on how to start and grow a business. People say, how do I start and grow a business? This book explains to you how to do it. And one of the uh, things in the book that's awesome is it has these self-assessments. And I'm going to read a few of them to you, so the, the listeners, so you can start to kind of marinate on this, okay? So on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest, rate your ability to consistently produce a steady volume of leads without your direct effort, okay? 10 being the highest, go ahead and get out a piece of paper. On a scale of 1 to 10, rate yourself on your ability to have a step-by-step -step lead management and organizational system. One more. On a scale of one to ten, rate yourself on your 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 team's follow up system a follow up system to consistently follow up with inbound leads. See, why do people have to be self aware and really kind of either rate themselves or take note of it of of how highly they would rate themselves on a scale of one to ten in these areas? You have to be honest with yourself because this gives you the blueprint of how to fix things and make things better. You know if. I tell you what, the people out there that go, oh, I'm a 10 on all those things. I'm a 10. I'm and my business is, I can't, I don't understand why my business isn't doing better. You're not being honest with yourself. So step one, you got to look in the mirror. You got to be honest with yourself. You got to really evaluate, <laughs> st step out, step out, go through the list, the checklist, evaluate yourself. And this will give you the blueprint of what you need to fix. I just thought of something real quick here. Oh, my wife is as a 10. She's a wonderful lady. She's smart. She's gorgeous. How did you get her? But I'm like a two. <laughs> like a, I'm like maybe not a two. Mysteries maybe like a one. of the maybe world. Like a one. Yeah. And the thing is, I realized that pretty quickly in life. I'm like, I'm, I'm a two. I'm maybe like a 2.4. So I'm going to have to have like a whole series of moves. My wooing process, my courting process is going to yeah. have to be over off the, the top. Yeah. Yeah. Off the charts. Yeah. To, 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 to land her, you know, as, as an incredible wife there. So you just got to be honest about these things. That's right. You can't fix it. So I'm going to ask you, Hillary, when you came in and you took over as, as the vice president of the business, what did you see as some of the areas that needed the most improvement and how did you go about fixing them? Um, we needed, we actually didn't have a sales team. Um, so we were only getting business based on referrals and, and our technology didn't allow us to grow as fast as I would like us to. So when I first started, um, I invested in both areas. So you said when you first came in, you were aware of the problems and you went after those first. Correct. Why not just focus on the areas that were already good and just making them even better? I mean, what was your strategy? What was your mindset going into that? I knew we had a good product to sell and, and I knew we had good people on staff already, but, but we needed to change things to grow. We needed to become more electronic and allow technology to do more of the work versus everything so manual. Now on a scale of one to 10 thrivers, I want you to rate yourself right now on a scale of one to 10, your ability to generate leads through search engine optimization. You know, Google that, that Google, see, Google's a thing. Is it a thing? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a thing. I mean, some people are using the thing. I mean, when you go up on your smartphone, yeah. Some people go to this thing called Google. Hmm. They're not on. They're not on uh, MySpace anymore. They're on <laughs> Google. And they go up there and they'll type in like a, a thing they're looking for, apparently. And whatever comes up top, like you know, they'll, they'll start to call those things. Yeah. And so you want to rate yourself on a scale of one to ten right now, Thrivers, and on a scale of one to ten, your ability to generate leads through search engines. And if you're not doing well, this just in: we have unbelievable in-person two-day workshops, Z, where we teach people. 
how to optimize their website, how to build a linear So you're workflow. saying it's not a rigged system. It's not I a mean, rigged system. I mean, you can system. actually do something to get to the top of Google. I'm going to give people the, the, the Google challenge right now. The Google challenge. Okay, let's get see. out oh, your phone. Fine. I like go. challenges. And go ahead and type in Tulsa Men's Haircuts. Spell it wrong. Spell it right. Just Tulsa Men's Haircuts. And who comes up top? Boom. Elephant in the room. That's one of my businesses. Okay. Why? Because we know the system. Let's type in uh, Tulsa Cookies. You know, cookies. cookies. It's a holiday season. Who doesn't like cookies? You want some great Thanksgiving cookies? Come on. Cookies. They're already closed. We should have thought that. But get, maybe for, for Christmas, we could have. Can we get some turkey shaped cookies? For, you could get some turkey shaped Christmas cookies because oh, okay. it's already right, Thanksgiving right, yeah, and we're closed right. today. But if you Google Tulsa Cookies, you're going to find Barbie cookies. Again, again, a client we work with. If you Google, et cetera, et cetera, and we can teach you how to do that, but you have to be aware of your biggest limiting factor. A couple more on a scale of one to 10. Rate your team's ability to generate leads through cold calling. Oh, oh. on a scale of one to 10. Rate your team's ability to generate leads through business development, where you have a partnership with someone who pitches you leads. These are all areas where you can rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. But Z, if you don't know there's a problem, it's kind of hard to fix it. Absolutely. And that's why you have to be honest with looking at your business. You know, and if you can't, maybe you can hire someone to come in. You can ask some people that are around you. You can have some other people take a look at it. But you've got to get, you got to figure out what the problem is. You can hire it. somebody like Hillary to come in and change your culture, but she's not available. But stay tuned. Thrive Time Show. Learn how to sell more stuff. You're listening to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. Hello, Thrive Nation. Welcome back to the holiday edition, the very special holiday edition of the Thrive Time Show here, where we are broadcasting from the basically empty Thrive 15 Dojo of Mojo. And if you're on Facebook Live, you can see Dr. Zellner. He's created some incredible hand-based turkey art. It's, it's, it's handmade. You could say it's handmade there. And, and Thrivers, if somebody who's just listening to this for the first time, maybe you, you your, your family got into a big political debate or some religious debate, and you're like, that's it. I'm going to go get some gas, which is code for calm down, calm down. They'll, they'll all leave soon. It's like, it's, it's like the, the Griswolds. It's like a Christmas oh, yeah. vacation moment where your cousin Eddie has come over and he's, oh, yeah. well, Clark, I'm sure going to hate leaving next month. I mean, you're starting <laughs> yeah. to like, you're just, so you've left to get in your car. You're trying to free up your mind space. What you've discovered here is Tulsa's only local business radio show. It's business school without the BS. I'm Clay Clark. I'm the former SBA entrepreneur of the year. To my right is Dr. Robert Zellner on Facebook Live if you're watching. And we have a very special guest, Dr. Z. We have the, the fabulous, the fabulous, uh, and I'll say this, th this just ends a little over half of the listeners to 1170 are ladies. Wow. And so we have made a concerted effort, a specific effort. We've said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to scour Tulsa for some of the top, most successful female entrepreneurs, business owners out there. And we're going to, we're going to bring them on. These mompreneurs, these, these gurus, they're going to come in and educate us. And they're going to bring kind of that, 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 that business success knowledge, but with a little bit of that estrogen to it. They're yeah. going to balance this out, Z, a little bit here. Wow. And so we brought in a lady, a guru. She's putting up with both of us. It's Miss Hillary Jenny, the vice president of Team Professional Services. How are you? I'm doing good. I appreciate you stepping into the box that rocks. I know there's like four dudes and one lady. It's a little bit, it's kind of like the Smurfs. <laughs> but thank you for being here today. We're talking about specifically the high art of increasing your sales. And I know there's a lot of people listening today who are going, hey, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that I'm, I'm healthy. I'm thankful that I, I, uh, I've made it this far this year. I'm thankful, you know, some of you've gone through some health issues this year. Some of you've gone through some personal issues. Some of you are just struggling. You're going, hey, you know, I, I'm just thankful, though, that I've made it here to this day. But you go, you know what, 2017, that you, the new year's right around the corner, and I want next year to be much better than this year. And I, I, I don't want to get stuck. And so I, I want to ask you this here. It, it, Jenny, what advice would you have, or Hillary, what, what advice would you have for anybody who's listening who is kind of uh, stuck in their business? They're, they're, they have a great product, but their sales just aren't happening. What advice would you have? Sure. You know, keep in mind, it's typically, what, 10 no's before you get a yes. Mm. So, so don't give up. Okay. You're going to hear no. Um, really, we've been successful by need-based selling. Ask the right questions. Make sure you're providing a solution to a problem the customer may not have even known that they have. Um, so if somebody's listening right now, and I, I will just validate what you're saying because I see this a lot. 
Um, years ago, I worked with a caterer, uh, Z, a caterer in Tulsa. Mm. Neat guy. And you know what his problem was, Z? He couldn't bake a cake? No, the food was great. Oh, the food. Oh, then check. Well, then he should have been able to sell a ton of them. Well, the phone would ring. Boop, 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 boop. Thank you for calling such and such. And, and no exaggeration, Thrivers. This is what we taught him. When people ask, how much, because if we answer the phone, thank you for calling such and such, the customer almost always says, uh, how much do you guys uh, charge for uh, your... That's what they always say. Mm-hmm. And he used to say, well, starting off at, at, at $10 a head, I can do... And they go, thank you very much. Like, yeah. Done. So I taught him, I said, no matter what they ask you, say, well, great, what day are you looking at? Mm-hmm. And they said, wow, well, June 5th? Okay, great, what facility? They go, Har Weldon Mansion. And I said, no matter what the venue is, compliment it. Go, oh, Har Weldon Mansion, I've heard good things about that. So how many people are you expecting? And they tell you. Say, well, let me ask this. Are you looking for more fine dining or more casual? Or, or And they begin to find those needs. And you're saying, so let me ask you this. How familiar are you with the world of catering? Not really. Well, a lot of companies in Tulsa, they charge very low price. And they nickel and dime you. They get you for a lot of costs. And ours is a, a, a upfront cost. And what we do to get you a specific price right down to the dollar, there's no overcharges. There's no overages. There's no extra fees, hidden fees. What we do is we meet with you. We do a 30-minute face-to-face consultation and a taste testing. So you can test the items that we have and see if it's the right fit for you. Um, do you like Asian or barbecue? Or, and we ask them the questions. They say, oh, I like barbecue. He might like a little bit of... We go, hey, I know you guys have some different styles, some different palettes. We're going to go ahead and prepare some samples. And let's meet this Saturday at uh, 1 o'clock, and we'll go ahead and have you guys do a sample. You're listening to the Thrive Time Show on Talk Radio 1170. But once people are sitting down doing a sample and they're asking all those right questions, they begin to discover, he says, now who's going to assist the bride in cutting the cake? He says, well, they say, well, what do you mean? He says, well, you know, most brides haven't cut the cake before. And they need someone to kind of show them how. Who's going to serve the cake? Um, who's going to make sure that the leftovers get put in the right spot? Who's going to decide on the table, linen, the decor, the uplighting? Who's going to... And as you said, they're discovering problems that the customer didn't even know they had. And I'm not kidding. Didn't change the food. Didn't change the location. Didn't change the website. Didn't change anything. Guy was able to go from about 200000 a year of sales to almost $2 million of sales in about a two-year window just by implementing that system. So that's a big thing. Right. Providing that customer solution that they left think they, they couldn't do without. And Z, there's a lot of optometrists out there who are listening. And if they're listening in Tulsa, we don't want to give them too much advice because <laughs> you you want your optometry clinic to be super dominant. But you've been successful in many, many niches. And one recently that you've invested in, a lot of people don't know, but you've invested heavily in a local bank uh, called Regent Bank. And Regent Bank uh, is, a, is a neat local bank that uh, it, it's, it can't compete with Bank of America. It can't be more Bank of America than Bank of America. It's a boutique business bank. So how, 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 what is a boutique business bank? A, a boutique business it's, bank. What is that like? It's, we, we make a deal. You can't refuse. We just come and make No. It's all about customer service and all about for the startup uh, businessman or professional. Um, and so we give a lot high level of service. We, you know, we don't really advertise for the drop-in checkbook savings account, you know, the check-in accounts or the, all the, all the drive-by. We only have one location in Tulsa and we go to them. We don't have a bank on every corner. And so we're just kind of that boutique customer service driven bank to business owners. But see, I want to know if I'm a business owner and I, I, I just, I feel like all banks are the same. Really, every bank is all the, it's all the same. What, what makes your bank so different, bank? Z, <laughs> what makes your bank so different? Is it all the suckers? Do you guys have better suckers? <laughs> yeah, are no, toasters, suckers? toasters. No, it's customer service. It's what makes it better our people and the way we approach the business side of it. You know, we try to, you know, we're, we move very quickly. We, we, we try not to have a lot of clients. We try to focus on the few that we have and take very good care of them. I mean, obviously we're growing and we opened up Oklahoma City. Wow. And we have our original one was in Nawada. Nawada. Yeah. That's Nawada's the bank, huge. It's the, the home of uh, the fighting Nawadans. It's right next to a lot of water. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> but that's what we do. I'm a customer service, you know, and that's how you kind of judge it. Money is money, right? I'm rate gonna, to rates. I'm going to interrupt you with a, just oh. a truth canon of questions. Here we're we going to go. fight. We're going to fight. <laughs> so are you uh, optometry? Are you God's gift to optometry? Do you know something about the eyeball that other humans don't? No. <laughs> no? No. What about banking? Do you guys know more about banking than anybody else you know about bank and bank, you know, Mr. Banks? <laughs> To be honest, no. Uh, what about auto auctions? Do you know more about the automobile and this unbelievable knowledge of the vehicle? No. So all the businesses you're involved in, it comes down to sales, marketing, and customer service. Shh, don't give away all my secrets. 
secrets. All right, fine. We're moving on here. So step number six is you must create your step-by-step system. Now, Steve Jobs has a notable quotable, which we documented in my incredible book called Start Here, the World's Best Business Book, which, by the way, is available on Amazon.com. 